Has it kind of felt like watching a train wreck in slow motion with this coronavirus stuff? I know it's sure feeling that way to me. So today I want to talk about that a little bit and some lessons we can learn. First, I'm not going to dive real deep into the statistics and uh, all the uh, conspiracy theories about the virus. Uh, you know, there's, I see numbers going back and forth each direction. But I will say this. A couple weeks ago, I kind of foo-fooed this whole thing off as uh, a complete overreaction. But as I'm watching the numbers rise on confirmed cases, and it's a logarithmic rise to it, I got to wonder, where does that stop? And how many cases are we going to have before we can kind of plateau and kind of level that curve out? And I look at what China did. It was pretty draconian measures to get it to, to level off. You know, they're still getting a few confirmed cases, but for the most part, they've leveled off on their confirmed cases. And I wonder here in the U.S. whether we're prepared to do that or not. It would be devastating to the economy in, to do that. And I think everybody knows that. And the one thing that I've, like I said, I'm not going to dive real deep into all the specifics on whether I think this is a way overblown or not. I, I think it's got to pan out a little longer for me to make up my mind whether we're having knee-jerk reactions to this or not. I do see that, that it's not quite exponential growth, but it's a logarithmic growth that I'm watching. And I, I got to put some credence to some of the measures that are being taken. Some of them are maybe a little rash right at this point, but uh, I don't know. I looked at what uh, China did to have, to stop that virus from spreading, and you know, I, I can't argue with uh, they, they've got it stopped or, or slowed way down. So anyway, I think we can learn some things from this. Um, if you haven't been a prepper, I'm sure you're probably rethinking that, or you should. Just looking at how fragile our system truly is, our supply chain system, our medical uh, supply system, speaking of medical supplies and medicines, we are so reliant on China. It's ridiculous. I heard today um, it's anywhere from 80 to 95% reliant for antibiotics and some other medical items from China. That that should be a wake up call. That is scary. That I I was dumbfounded when I heard that number. How can we be so reliant on a country such as China for our basic medical supplies? That's we we have to change that as a country. We have to this should be a wake up call to rethink the way we do things in this country. I don't know if it's going to happen. I surely hope it will. I hope if any good comes out of this, we rethink how we do business as a country. We can't on our important items. I'm not talking about your trash cans and, and Legos that come from China. I'm talking about important supplies as a country we need, we depend on. We shouldn't be relying on China for those. We need to really look at that. But things you can do, that's something the country needs to take on, things that you can do. I hope you've been prepping for a long time and you've got some stuff stored back, at least a couple, three months worth of food. I'm not talking just this coronavirus. It could be anything. It could be um, a fuel shortage. It could be uh, a huge storm comes through and supply, uh, supply lines are cut or drastically reduced. You can see the weird reaction people have had over this coronavirus. I mean, it's just some of it's been absolutely bizarre. Like, we went to the store yesterday. We usually, like, go to Walmart every couple months. We were in that, uh, we have to drive a little ways to get to a Walmart. We drove over uh, for another reason. I thought, well, let's go ahead and pop into Walmart, see what's on the shelf, see if it's as bad as what they've been saying. Because we're in a very rural uh, part of Oregon. I mean, it's a very sparse population here. And surprisingly, it's... All the shelves uh, of the items you've heard about, TP, any paper supplied, tissues, um, all gone. Beans, rice, pretty much gone. There's a, There was a few. Other items are still pretty well stocked currently. I don't know if that's going to stay the same if this continues to go on further like lockdowns. I, I think you're going to see the shelves kind of disappear. People panic. People are not rational all the time. 
And I, I kind of understand the toilet paper to a degree. Um, if you're locked down for a month, it's kind of important to have some TP. But if you're like us, we've, you know, we're not these radical preppers that you sometimes see on these ridiculous shows and stuff. But for the last um, probably close to 10 years, we've realized how fragile our system is. How something small can happen and really mess up modern life. And that's what you're starting to see with this. I'm hoping it kind of calms down a little bit and doesn't go too far. But we've already started down this path quite a ways. And you can just see that even here in rural Oregon, Podunk, Oregon, people panic buying. It's just, it's, it's really brought to light. It's brought to light some things in our house that we were kind of lacking on. Like if tomorrow we couldn't get X item or Y item, how would we get that? We've been, the basics were pretty well covered. We've been covered for quite a while. We've got enough food for quite a while. And it wasn't, and we've not thinking the end of the world's coming, but it's just common sense. What happens if you lose your job? What happens if a huge snowstorm or a dam breaks, whatever, you know, just name your scenario. This virus thing was probably like the last thing on our list that we thought would be a problem. But at any rate, you just name the scenario and what happens if those daily trucks come into your store, slow down or stop, or we get this incredible panic buying and people just clean the shelves out. What are you going to do if you've only got two or three days worth of food on your shelf? or you lose your job and you don't have an income coming in, how are you going to feed your family? You know, that's things you got to think about. That's the reason we started doing this. Um, I think it's probably been at least 10 years ago. We decided we need to be a little more self-sufficient in the area of we don't need a, a handout to survive if we lose our income, if we something happens, the supply chains are cut. And you can tell with... Here's the other thing that I think's worried me over this coronavirus. The virus itself doesn't really concern me, even though today our little boy, um, he's he's uh, he's sick. You know, he's got he's been vomiting and and no fever or anything. And then we kind of looked it up today. Without all, oh, it's not not the virus. Of course, anytime you got a sick kid, you you always think the worst worst of the what's going on. But we looked it up, and in some cases, the dang virus. Uh, manifest itself first in the uh, GI tract, and you get vomiting and diarrhea, and then the fever comes later. So we're praying that that's not the case with this little guy. Hopefully it's just something he ate or he's just got a stomach bug. That's more than likely what it is. It's just a stomach bug. But, man, it, when this kind of stuff's going around, it really makes you worry about ridiculous things like that. Your mind just goes there. But back on track here, what worries me more than about the um, this whole thing than the virus. The virus itself, I don't think a huge concern to me and my my family and my under my uh, roof. I worry about my parents some. You know, they're up in their 80s. I don't want them to get this stuff. But what worries me is the lasting cascading effect this can have on our country, especially our financial system. I don't know if people really. I hope this kind of brings us to light to people. How we've, as a country, we've built this elaborate deck of cards that's a mile high. And to protect it, we've built walls around it to try and keep that uh, that card deck standing up there at that, that mile high altitude. And now we're starting to see some chinks in those walls cracking, letting a little wind in, pushing on our, our financial tower that we've built. It's it's pretty dang scary. if you If you really look at it, and what could happen, not from the virus, but from the overreaction and from just a financial aspect, how crippling that could be to a country like ours. It's um, something you really need to consider. And that's that's probably been one of my bigger fears uh, for quite a while is a financial problem with this country. Yeah, with... Um, you know, the, you, there's so many scenarios that you can run with with that, but I don't. I try not to let my mind go out too far on those paths. But you just start thinking about the cascading effect of all the layoffs people are going to experience from this, 
industries like shuttered, uh, nearly shuttered from what's happening. And all, then all those people laid off. And so they don't have money to go buy products. And so the people they buy products from are going to have to get rid of employees. And it's just a huge cascading effect. And I think that's the reason you're seeing the government try, <laughs> emphasize try to do something about it. And I think that's one of the things we need to learn from this is we can't depend on the government to always help. You need to be prepared yourself. And, you know, I think this crisis in a couple months will pass. But it has, I think for a lot of people, exposed that very thin underbelly of our financial system and our supply chains in this country. And if it hasn't, you should wake up and look at that. It, this should be a complete and utter wake-up call to look at the reality of how our society works and what you can do to help yourself in the long run. I know it's going to be hard right now to go stock up on anything. It, shelves are getting pretty bare in places, and people are nuts. They're just crazy. Like, I went in the store today. They have no TP, but the stock, the shelves are stocked with flu medicines. I mean, if you're worried about getting this stuff, that you should have some medicine. You read all the documents of what you should do. You should stay home and take cold medicine or flu medicine. And you'll, most people will get past it just fine. It's it, it does have a much higher death rate. I understand that. But uh, things that people should be stocking up on, they don't seem to be. It's just kind of mind-blowing to me. I know, I'm kind of rambling here. Anyway, I wanted to put a plug in for a company I've dealt with. Uh, we bought quite a bit of our uh, supplies from this company. It's My Patriot Supply. And I put an affiliate affiliate link down below. The good company to deal with. Right now they've got a, I think it was a four to six week backlog. Um, last I looked, it was a couple days ago. Might be a little longer now. But, and you really need to start thinking about this. If it's not this thing that's going to cause problems somewhere down the road, there's going to be some other virus. There's going to be some other problem with the system. You may lose your job. You may experience supply chain shortages and it's nice to have the ability to just go into your your room pull out some food and know your family's going to get fed so and there's cheaper ways to go about it there's no doubt you can go to the uh the mormon canneries and all that kind of stuff but it's it's very time consuming if you don't have a lot of time i really we've tried the food from my patriot supply we broke open a couple cans and it's good stuff. It's it's not... We've bought some stuff from a couple other companies. I won't mention their names, but it was not good. It, it was edible. I'll give it that. It was edible. This stuff's actually not bad at all. I mean, it's not something I want to eat for fun, but it's uh, it's pretty good food for what it is. It's I, I have no complaints with it. And the other thing is, a couple of those other companies, we opened their cans up. And they're, I think they're four or five-gallon tubs. And you still had a lot of room in the top of those tubs that you could actually fill them up a little bit more. The ones from My Patriot Supply, they, they were completely full of uh, food items. So no complaints whatsoever with what we've got from them. So again, a link below. Um, it helps support the channel if you buy something from them. So just something to think about. Be a little more self-reliant. I know some people think this whole thing's a hoax. And I don't know, I, I'm still, I'm kind of leaning more that it's not a host, hoax, looking at what some of these other countries are going through and the drastic measures they're taking. It's not just a U.S. problem. If this was just hyped up in the U.S., I would be, yeah, this might be a pretty good hoax on an election year. But seeing the reactions of other companies and how this thing's been growing, I just, I'm starting to lean towards it's really not as uh, lighthearted as I thought it, it was originally. Anyway, take care. God bless you guys. And uh, pray for us. We'll be praying for all of you. And uh, take care. Keep your powder dry. And we'll see you guys on the next video.